so we are about to go live with Curiel Noon, the CEO of Hamilton Families. He's about to pop up here and we're going to dive into his experiences uh, as CEO leading this incredible team. We're going to talk more about what Hamilton Families um, goals are and what they attempt to achieve. To answer as many of questions that you all have as possible um, and see how this all ties in, see what everyday citizens can do to support Hamilton families and continue the work that they're attempting to do. Hey, Curiel. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Christopher. Sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Look, I, some, I, I myself don't really understand how this all works, so I'm glad we can get it together. <laughs> yes. So again, thanks for coming to join us for the Ham for Progress Instagram takeover. Um, we're going to dive into, I have a bunch of questions here that I'd love to ask. We're going to see if any of the people watching the live have questions as well and see if we can answer those. But just to start off, I'd like you to tell everyone who you are, um, what, you, what your experience is in the world that you work in, and what Hamilton Families is. Well, thank you so much for having me on the live. It's kind of fun. It's my first time on Instagram, so I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I sound like an old fuddy teddy, but... <laughs> it is true. This is my first time on Instagram. Um, a little bit about me. I am uh, a native New Yorker, born and raised. I've been in San Francisco since 2000, so almost 21 years. It'll be in February 5th, 21 years. Wow. Um, it's the longest place, longest I've lived anywhere, actually. Um, I really love the city, and I love being able to support the city and the people who live in it. Um, and I came to Hamilton in October, so I've only been here for four months. Uh, and I've learned quite a bit about family homelessness and about Hamilton families in those four months. It's been a steep learning curve, but um, everything that I've learned has been really great. Um, and, you know, we, we stick to our mission of striving to end family homelessness in San Francisco um, over, you know, in a variety of different ways. Uh, one of the ways that we do it is through residential programs. We have a uh, family shelter, one of the largest in the city. We have two residential programs for transitional housing for folks who, families who just need to get a place to stay while they get on their feet. Um, mm -hmm. And they can stay in their transitional housing program for up to a year or maybe 18 months, a year to 18 months. And so we'll, we'll see those families for um, that time period while they're, you know, they get their jobs ready, they get their, you know, careers back in order, whatever's happening in their lives. Um, and we also have a rapid rehousing program. I think you interviewed Ms. Ivory this morning. Yeah. Um, probably talked. She's so fantastic. So great. Um, and she's, she can tell, she knows where all the bodies are buried. Let me tell you, <laughs> she's been around for a long time. Yeah. Um, and rapid rehousing, what we do is we get families through a city's coordinated entry system um, who are prioritized for rapid rehousing and we help them um, we help them figure out how much income they have to spend on rent. And mm -hmm. then we help them find through our real estate program, we help them find uh, units that they can afford and we help them get housed in, in those units. Um, it's an incredible program. Um, we work with hundreds of families every year to get families into new units um, and get them settled. And then we pay their rent for 12 to 20 months while they get their, while they get their, get on their feet again. We help them with um, wraparound services around workforce development, case management. We help them find childcare if they need it. We help them find school districts if they need it for school aged children. We really just kind of help support them as the family gets stable in their, in their new, in their new apartment or new house. Um, mm -hmm. And we stick with them for you know that 12 to 20 months. And, and then when the subsidy ends, the hope is that the family will be stable enough to continue to pay their own rent and stay in their own unit for the rest of, you know, for the rest of, the rest of time is the hope is that they're permanently stable. Yeah, I mean, something I didn't know until I, I like I said, I spoke to Miss Ivory and I've gotten to talk to Mayo and, and, uh, and Anna and so many of your team and the information that the things I just didn't know are kind of like remarkable. And I didn't know that part of what Hamilton families does is like you said, not just like try to find them shelter, but find a home and then help support them in building the skills to be able to sustain it and, and live well on the other side of, of your, their time working with you. And that's kind of incredible. I, I didn't know that any um, organization out there really did anything like that. Yeah, we definitely, I mean, it's not really just enough. I mean, we believe in housing first, that whatever, whatever else the family's experiencing, we try to get them housed first. Mm -hmm. Whether they're experiencing substance use challenges or mental health challenges or domestic violence challenges, whatever it is, we have to, our you know, initial um, response is to help them 
get housed. Mm. You know, some, very few families actually live on the street, but we find that families are doubled up with relatives or with friends in an apartment, sometimes tripled up, sometimes living in vehicles, sometimes couch surfing with, you know, from this friend's house to this friend's house and, you know, in, in unstable situations. And so our, our first response is to really sort of end the instability by getting them housed, period. Yeah. And then yeah. we work with them on whatever else is happening in their lives. If, you know, they need support around um, parenting classes or getting kids registered for school or whatever that issue is, we try to help them do that. Um, mm. In some instances, it's through sort of formal uh, case management. And sometimes it's really informal. Like, uh, you know, someone like Miss Ivory, you know, she kind of takes people on, you know, in a really sort of organic auntie, big mama kind of way. And it's like, hey, let me let me show you how to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and that that can be very effective. You know, we have a lot of, you know, young parents who are, you know, first time parents who may have um, not really sort of experienced great parenting in their lives. And so she can help them learn how to be a better parent um, by example, by Right. So, so, you know, we really do provide like a gamut of wraparound services, depending on the individual needs of each, of each family. Yeah, I wanted to ask, like, just because we're in February, Black History Month, and I, I feel I spend a lot of time just throughout the year thinking about um, our community and, and the effects of systemic racism on our community and how we can combat that. So I wanted to ask, like, how does Hamilton Families address the realities of systemic racism in the work that you do to end family homelessness? Like, how, how do those two things meet? That's a, that's a great question. And it's a huge part of what we do. I mean, the vast majority of the folks who, uh, who we serve in our programs are African American. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things about San Francisco that I was shocked to discover when I moved here 20 years ago is that you know, for being such a small percentage of the general population, we occupy a huge percentage of the of the population of families experiencing homelessness. So, mm. you know, we're at I think we're at four percent of the general population, forty percent of the homeless population, and that's that's a lot. I mean, that, that's yeah. there's no there's not an accident that that's happening. That mm. is the direct result of systemic racism, and one of the ways um, that we try to address that is through policy advocacy. Um, you know, because we can provide individual services. And we do, and we think it is important. But in order to change the systems in which these inequities are happening, you have to go to the lawmakers, you have to go to the policymakers, and you have to bring them the experiences of the people who are experiencing homelessness and say, this is not working. Yeah. This is what they're asking for. This is what people actually need. And so we've been building that muscle, you know, for the past several years to really sort of work with other um, other service providers in coalitions to really speak with a, lar with a loud voice to the board of supervisors and to the mayor and to other policymakers, legislators, um, and really sort of advocate for, you know, um, the kinds of policies that will, that, will, that will serve our families well and help them you know, not only get out of homelessness, but get stable. Um, right. So it is one of the things that we think about our work as the work of social justice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, homeless, homeless advocacy is really about, you know, creating equity in the world and really sort of uh, making sure that people whose needs are are not being met get them met um, yeah. in a in a fair and equitable way. Yeah, I found like like I said over the past day and a half, two days that I've been kind of seeped in learning about Hamilton families. One of the things that struck me is how it seems that you all do not underestimate the importance of our humanity and 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 how seeing a person as human first is important. And I wanted to know like. Uh, even something as simple as the fact that you call the people you work with and for participants, um, the, the language around saying a person experiencing homelessness as opposed to calling someone homeless right. um, is it, so important. And I just wanted to know how in, in your time since joining Hamilton Families back in October, I think you said, like, how has the way Hamilton Families um, functions changed uh, progressed or, or or affirmed your beliefs and ideals about how we treat one another? You know, it really has affirmed them. You know, before I worked here, I worked at Glide. And, you know, we worked with a different population of folks experiencing homelessness, but in, a, in very similar ways. And, you know, it just coming to Hamilton really just sort of affirmed, you know, my belief that people need to be, you need to look at people as whole, as whole systems, mm -hmm. you know, not just someone experiencing homelessness, but a person who has their entire, you know, has a whole life context that you have to take into account when you're trying to help them solve whatever challenges that, that they're facing. Mm -hmm. And unless you can do that, you're not gonna be successful as a provider. You right. know, we have, um, we've looked at medical models where, you know, people are sought 
they looked at as patients mm. and not as human beings. And right. those models are, not, are generally not as successful as the models where, you know, someone is seen, in, seen holistically in all of their humanity and you sort of look at all aspects of their life where, you know, they may need some support. Um, so I think Hamilton is definitely on the right track in the mm. way we think about, um, you know, homelessness as an experience. It's not an identity, right. you know. It is, it's something that someone is experiencing for hopefully a very short amount of time and will, they will not experience it, you know, for, for hopefully with our intervention, they will not experience it for long. Um, and then we can get them, you know, back to a, to a stronger, more stable place in their lives. Yeah. Uh, and, and like I said, since I'm, I'm learning more about Hamilton families over the past few days than I think I knew before, I'm, sh I'm keenly aware of the just lack of information that I had and how easy it actually is to get that information. So like, what's something that if you were to run into someone on the, th on the street, you wind up talking to someone on the subway or whatever, and they ask what you do and you start talking about Hamilton families, like what's a few little nuggets of information that you would want them to leave with to kind of carry forward and have in their pocket? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I would want them to know for starters that family homelessness is prevalent even though it's invisible, it's prevalent in San Francisco that, you know, there are quite a few families who are experiencing homelessness right now. Um, I don't think people realize that um, mm. because we don't see, you know, as San Franciscans, we see people who are experiencing homelessness on the street, mm. um, single individual adults, and we don't necessarily see them in their sort of familial context with children, or with spouses. And so we don't really sort of think of families it's not what comes top of mind when you think about homelessness in San Francisco, you don't think about families. So yeah. percent, I would sort of lead with the fact that it is an issue that needs mm. to be addressed, you know, it, in, the same, in the same complex multivalent ways that um, individual family home, individual homelessness needs to be addressed. Mm. Um, I'd want folks to know that, that early intervention with children in particular um, really can stave off, you know, long-term, you know, effects on, on kids. Um, I think that experiencing homelessness as a child can lead to really sort of long-term damage. And so the shorter that experience is, the better it is for children. And so we really want to provide um, services for, for the children as well. Mm -hmm. um, what else would I want to know? <laughs> I'd like folks to know, to think about, you know, to, to think about um, homelessness as something that could happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. that not really those people over there or they made bad choices. I think many of us who live in San Francisco where the, you know, the cost of living is so high, many of us are a paycheck away from experiencing homelessness ourselves. And it's only, you know, there but for the grace of God go I, you know, right. to be honest. And, you know, to really sort of urge people to um, practice empathy, you yeah. know, with some of these, some of the folks who they see um, out and about who are experiencing this, this terrible thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and by extension of that last question, what can I, the everyday human, like whether I have tons of uh, financial uh, access or whether I have none at all, like what could I do to be a part of the change to support Hamilton families? I think, you know, sharing information about family homelessness is always a good start, you mm -hmm. know, or just also, you know, being human, being human with people who you see on the street who may be experiencing homelessness, like look people in the eye, say good morning, say yeah. hello, even if you can't, you know, offer them a dollar or whatever it is that someone might ask you for. I mean, a smile can go a long way. Mm. Um, I also think that everyday people can share the information with their friends. You know, people are on social media, they can, you know, highlight an article, share it with people in their circle, in their network, um, really get the word out about Hamilton families and about families experiencing homelessness. Um, of course, you know, money is always good too. We like money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so money always helps. Um, but not everybody has money and that's not the only way you can help. Um, during pre-COVID times, there were also ways that you could volunteer. Mm. You know, you could show up and help serve a meal or help, you know, pack, pack backpacks for school kids or whatever that, whatever those opportunities might be. Um, Unfortunately, these days, those opportunities are very limited for volunteering, but hopefully, please God, soon, we will be back to a time where we can invite volunteers back into yeah. our sites. Um, but yeah, those are three ways that, that folks, can, folks can help. I love that. I know someone asked in the chat earlier, so I just wanted to make sure I got that question in there. And this is, again, we're you know two Black men speaking during Black History Month, and something that I sit with a lot, I think, 
as I as I grow older specifically is like this idea of legacy, especially because I'm in Hamilton and one of the large themes of the musical is legacy, who and who tells our story and what that story is. And uh, I believe one of the legacies, one of the many legacies of black people historically is this idea of uh, perseverance and strength and not just persevering in spite of the challenges, but something that I think Hamilton family shares with the black identity and the black community is this idea of like living well and thriving. Like that's the goal, that's the journey. Uh, um, and so like 30 years down the line, what do you hope is Hamilton family's um, legacy? How do you think and hope that Hamilton families fits into Black History Month as an organization that has a lot of black people uh, and allies serving black people? That's a great question. I mean, I think, you know, my, my sincere hope is that in 30 years, we will have put ourselves out of business, frankly, mm -hmm. that we will have addressed, you know, with our coalition of partners, that we will have addressed the systemic issues that create family homelessness in the first place, that we will have worked with other partner agencies to, you know, create new policies that support families in, in ways that are useful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, shut down policies that are that are harming families who who could potentially experience homelessness. So hopefully, you know, we won't be needed in 30 years. I mean, that would right. be nice. I mean, I think other than that, I think the legacy, you know, you speak about living well, you know, in 30 years, I would love to see, you know, some of the families that we're helping support right now to have those those kids grow up, you know, mm -hmm. and do do good work in the world as well and just sort of pay it, continue to pay it forward. You know, I mean, I think one of the the things that I've always loved about African Americans, black folks, is that, you know, this whatever happens, we are resilient. That, you know, for all the things, the trials and tribulations of our people over the last 400 years in this country, <laughs> we are still singing and dancing and loving and joyful and making magic and mm. can't keep us down. And yeah. I think that Hamilton Families is also, is also part of that joyful legacy, you know, bringing people bringing people hope, helping support people with housing, with, you know, supportive, supportive services, and really sort of helping them, you know, come to places of joy in their lives. You know, I have yet to experience, experience this, but I was speaking with um, one of the stability specialists recently who was uh, taking a family to a move-in. The family had just gotten, you know, they'd gotten the keys for their, their new place and they were going to go to the spot. And she said that the move-in, you know, always gets her teary because the kids are so happy. You know, the kid, they guess they're like, they're just it's like, oh my God, my room, I have a room, you know? Yeah. Like, I just get goosebumps thinking about it because it really is like, that's, that's the point. That's what we're trying to do here is to sort of deliver joy and comfort and stability, you know, to the families who, who are experiencing homelessness, who, who just need a, help, who need a hand, you know, need a helping hand. So, yeah. And, and I want to ask as well, just because I think, like I said, uh, firsthand experiences of what, when it works, um, are important in, in the conversation about uh, progress. Uh, and so earlier I was talking, I had a conversation that will actually be on the Hamilton family's uh, Instagram a little later today with uh, Mayo Lunt, who is your real estate director. And uh, for those of y'all watching the live, she was she's incredible. You have to check out this interview I did with her. Oh, wow. It was crazy. But she, one, she left me emotional because at the end, she just has, the power that I think is like the truth about black people, like that power, that heart, that like need to live well and to make sure other people live well. Like, I think that's very much how I see my family. And, and so talking to her was incredible, but she spoke about her journey throughout Hamilton families, like creating the department that now um, that she works with. And I was wondering, and I'm, I'm going to ask you the same thing, like, what is it like? Because I think Hamilton family seems to do it right. What's the work environment that you've come into this family? Like, what's that like working with allies who all rally under this same cause? What's that like? It's incredible. I mean, honestly, you know, I didn't know what, I, what to expect coming in in October. Um, mm. But I have been continuously inspired and impressed by the, the fervor with which people approach the mission of this organization. People are serious about getting families housed, serious about supporting families, and God help you if you get in their way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really, I have been impressed. You know, people have worked long hours. They do hard work. They experience vicarious trauma. They put themselves out there in ways, you know, that really sort of show a deep, a deep love 
mm. you know, for the people that we're serving. And I think um, it's also a place full of laughter. I mean, yeah. you know, starting a, starting a job on Zoom, essentially, you know, I'm essentially like a virtual CEO, which I've <laughs> never done before. Yeah. Uh, has been a little bit strange, to be honest. But even so, even through the strangeness of the Zoom medium for, you know, town hall, all staff meetings or what have you, there's so much joy, so much camaraderie, so much conviviality. People obviously are connected to each other in very strong ways mm. that, um, that really sort of bespeak, you know, a deep, a deep connection to each other, but also to the communities that we're serving. So it's been great, you know, and it'll be even better when we can see each other in person. I, I'm really looking forward yeah. to that, to that opportunity. Yeah. And I mean, you know, and I moved to San Francisco from New York as well. I am not a native New Yorker, though, so I can't quite, I can't even try to claim that. But I was struck by some of the differences in in the environments here. And I want in in, in a way that just illuminated, I think, the importance of the work you all do for, for me, the average everyday person. Can you tell the people on this live like what you perceived uh, in the differences in like people experiencing homelessness and how, how the city of New York may help and how things in San Francisco are different. And because I think it's important to know that. It, they are hugely different. I was in New York maybe two summers ago and I was walking, it was in the summer, it was in July. So it was hot and I was with a friend and I was noticing that there weren't very many people on the street, looked like they were living on the street. And I was like, mm. how is, how's the city dealing with this issue? And, you know, the response I got was that not surprisingly, New York was kind of aggressive about the whole situation <laughs> and, and really sort of took over uh, a huge apartment building and turned it into a, a homeless shelter um, and got a lot of people off of the street very quickly. Um, mm. And so there are very few people who are experiencing homelessness, uh, you know, in a visible way in New York. Um, mm. I think it's also part of it has to do with the weather, too. You know, in the wintertime, if you're on the street in New York, you could die. Yeah. You know? It's serious, you know, it's not like here, it's February and it's 60 degrees outside and, you know, <laughs> right. it's a whole different animal. Right. But, um, but so I think there was some incentive to act quickly for New Yorkers that, you know, San Franciscans don't necessarily, haven't necessarily, necessarily felt. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is a very, it's a complex issue, homelessness, and it's not, it's not an easy issue to solve for. Um, mm -hmm. Particularly when you factor in things like systemic racism and misogyny and generations of economic inequity and educational disparities and health access disparity. I mean, the list is long that contributes to, you know, this, the experience of homelessness and, um, you know, having to solve for all of those complex factors is very, is very challenging. Yeah. Um, I think we are finally at a place in San Francisco where there is enough political capital and enough social capital and political awareness to really sort of move the needle. And I think, you know, for all that the pandemic has done harm, um, there is a silver lining. And that silver lining is that, you know, people, providers and politicians are, you know, breaking the mold and saying, we have to do something very different about how to solve for this particular problem. And so we're talking about things, you know, now that if you'd asked me a year ago, if they were possible in San Francisco, I would have laughed in your face. Yeah. But, but, and now they're like, we're actually implementing some of these solutions that, you know, would have been impossible to even imagine more than a year ago. So yeah. there is hope for the flowers. And I, I am I am I am hopeful that we're going to get to a, a better solution around homelessness in the city of San Francisco. Yeah, that, and that's important that that hope, I think, I imagine is really important to the work you do. It, it, it's interesting how this uh, conversation was gone, because I had like a list of questions. And because of like, I, I don't know either how I ask the questions or how your brain works. You've like tackled like two or three questions in one answer, which just okay. is amazing. <laughs> and I love it. So we, I mean, we have extra time and I want to just check to see if any of the people watching had any questions um, about, you know, Hamilton families, about uh, what, what our partnership has been through the Ham for Progress um, initiative. So I, let me scroll through these a little bit, see what people are saying. Uh, yeah. Um, people are loving, loving, uh, you got, yeah, people are loving having the information. That's great. Um, something I found uh, interesting, again, just because my, my first connection to Hamilton families is that my husband is a part of your team. And I love seeing that you all post on your social media accounts when you're looking for other people to get involved, what, be it volunteering, be it job openings. Like I always think 
like I said, I just didn't know how much you all do, even the supportive services that like just extend a little bit further beyond let's get them a house, um, which is crazy because I feel like, and you spoke to it exactly, I feel like one thing that my brain did for whatever reasons is consolidate how I saw the experience of homelessness. And I didn't know that the difference between families who experience homelessness and individuals who experience homelessness. I had no idea that there were organizations out there who attempted to um, not, not just get people sheltered, but to offer sustainability, so a support and sustainability. Um, and so I guess final question really is like, how, do you, how does the work you do, the people you interact with, the participants, how have they affected your life? I know you're only so many months into the virtual version of um, the work that you've been doing thus far, but I think that it, it's important for everyone to hear that we can be affected and it, in, in, in the impact that they have, a little bit about how you're impacted by it. Yeah, I mean, you know, speaking with the staff who work directly with participants is really, is always you know, instructional and inspirational. You know, I learn a lot from folks who interact directly with participants about the challenges that people are facing and how they meet them. Um, you know, I hear about, hear stories about, you know, families struggling with education. You know, during the pandemic, you know, really sort of, we have families who, um, for whom English is, a, is not their first language. And so, you know, having to navigate San Francisco Unified School District via Zoom has been a challenge for some of those families. And so, and really sort of talking to our children and youth services staff about, you know, having to support families with iPads and laptops, mm -hmm. teaching them how to, how to get on Zoom and how to, how to talk to uh, their kids' teachers and do all that. I mean, it really have been, it's impressive the lengths to which the staff will go to get the participants what they need. Um, yeah. you know, it's not, it's like on your job description says other duties as assigned. A lot of the work is other duties as assigned. You know, <laughs> there's stuff that you can describe in a job description and there's stuff that, that happens, you know, life happens and the staff respond. And so I think, you know, I've, I'm always touched by, you know, whenever I get a chance to hear stories about actual families that we're serving, I'm always really, really touched by, by those, by those stories. Um, I know we've got a couple of, um, videos coming out as well that highlight some of those families and i'm excited to share those with everybody when they're when they're done the mm -hmm. one i think the two of them that i've seen have been incredibly moving you know just like tears and like, <laughs> i mean it really yeah. like really hits you right in the right in the heart um so i mean it is it is moving the, the stories of human beings you know enduring you know homelessness and you know finding the resilience to get through it you know mm -hmm. it's always something that really makes me makes me proud to be a part of an organization like Hamilton Families. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting ride. You know, I mean, I think the pandemic has just, you know, made, uh, made existing cracks deeper. Um, yes. Really sort of, sort of made, exacerbated some of the problems that were already in existence and made it so that we couldn't ignore them. You know, when we look at some of our families who were affected by the pandemic because they work in industries that have, pretty much shut down, like hospitality, you know, it, in a town like San Francisco, where tourism is such a big deal, a lot of folks who are working, you know, low, low income jobs are working in hotels, so working in the hospitality industry in some kind of way, those hotels are not open now, those yeah. restaurants that support them are not open now, those bars that support them are not, are not open now. And so we found a lot of our families who have lost a lot of income and opportunities to, to have income as a result of the pandemic. And it really, you know, it's made it very difficult, you know, mm -hmm. I think on the families, but also uh, it made some challenges for us because it meant that, you know, families who were supposed to exit subsidies, we couldn't have them exit subsidies because they had nowhere else to go. And so we continue, you know, to support families um, over time throughout the pandemic. And we will continue to do it because we have to. Um, mm. That's amazing. <laughs> thank you for, thank you for spending this time to kind of like illuminate um, the work that Hamilton Families does, I know someone just asked this question and I, I, think I, I think I know the answer to this one. Someone asked what people can do to support from a distance. And I know that if you go to hamiltonfamilies.org support, that there's like 
a lot of different options for how you can support both at like if you're a corporation, if you're an individual, like if you're a family of people who want to do some things. Uh, so that's a way to get that information. I also want to tell the people who are watching this live and who will watch this as it's saved on the Ham for Progress page to go follow Hamilton Family's Instagram account because that information about the projects that Curio was just mentioning, the uh, the films that they're working on, the the documentaries that kind of allow the participants to speak on behalf of their experiences. I've seen little clips of them. They are incredibly moving, uh, incredibly powerful, and very important. So please go follow Hamilton Families on Instagram to keep up with when those things will be premiering. Um, is there anything else you want to leave us with before we get out of here? I think that covers it. Ham you know, sending people to hamiltonfamilies.org slash support is the, the best way to sort of get some of the information about how you can help from afar. But thank you so much, Christopher, for lending your platform and the Hamilton Musicals platform to this cause. I mean, it really is an incredible partnership. And I'm, I'm pleased as punch that you are doing that. You're taking, you know, two days to do this out of your own personal life. And I really appreciate the work that you put into the, into doing this for on behalf of Hamilton Film. So thank you for that. Of course. And I'm glad I could. I'm glad I have the space and the platform to be able to do that. So thanks again. Yeah. See ya. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. So ladies and gentlemen, folks, people of all ages and places and types, that was Kiriel Noon, the CAO of Hamilton Families. It was just a pleasure to speak with him. This video will be up on the Ham for Progress Instagram page. Um, and so you can check out everything that we talked about. Again, please go visit hamiltonfamilies.org slash support for all the information. Um, go follow their Instagram because I'm doing a little giveaway later. So you want to keep up with that. Please go follow Hamilton Family's Instagram page for information on what I'm giving away and how you can participate and potentially win this prize. But during this Black History Month, I just want to remind everyone that we want to center the voices of the people we're attempting to support. We want to make sure that we together can continue to move us as a society forward. I think that's one of the legacies of Black people is moving forward and always trying to get to a place where we can live well. So let's help everybody live well, all right? And uh, again, keep up with me for the rest of the day. We have a lot more posts. I have a lot more interviews that I'm going to be doing. And in order to see the full length interviews, you got to go over to Hamilton Family's Instagram page. Talk to y'all soon.